Okay, right. What we've got here is three living history groups. They're all talking. Shut up. Three living history groups. We've got the 156 Airborne, First Airborne Division, Parachute Regiment. They did lots of actions during the Second World War. The most famous one would be at Arnhem, which was a bit catastrophic to say the least, but not their fault. Okay, so we've got one group representing that brave bunch of guys. We've got the Oxen Books, which are also they were, um, at the same Battle of Arnhem. They were flown in by gliders who were originally a light infantry regiment, but they were converted to airborne troops in gliders. Again, had massive losses at Arnhem. And then you've got the fighting elite, which is this group down here. And they represent American and British special forces like Parachute Regiment, 101st Screaming Eagles, Second Rangers, all that sort of stuff. So we do all bits and pieces. If you've got any questions at the end of this thing, the lads will be happy to talk your ears off. Okay, they're all quite knowledgeable. Uh, if they don't know the answer, they'll lie. So, but if you were. Uh, yeah, I've got any questions at all, hang back till we've, uh, till we've done the display, okay? we are all good? Alright, first of all then we're going to have a look at a Mark III Lee Enfield, which was used from 1907 right through the First World War, through the Second World War, and it's still in use by lots of countries around the world. It's a really good rifle. Uh, if you'd just like to hold that up for me, there you go, that's number four. Mike, Malcolm, other Malcolm. Malcolm, other one, that's it, that's the number Mark III. <laughs> Yanks are useless. The, uh, so uh, it's a 10 round magazine. It's a, quite a fast firing weapon for a bolt action. That means by bolt action you've got to open a bolt, eject the spent cartridge, push the bolt forward, pushes a new belt around in the breech and you fire again. And it's so quick to use, during the First World War the Germans said all, all the Tommies were actually armed with machine guns. Okay, which they weren't of course. Right, this is the number, the Mark III, the Enfield. He's going to fire three shots. So here we go. Up in the air, Mac. We've got the missile as well. Okay. No pigeons falling out the sky, that's a result. Good up. Right. Hello. Can you so loud? Hello. Hello. You keep turning it off, I think. Hello, hello. Hold around the room. That's it. We'll tap us and shunt us. Right, okay. The other Lee Enfield now, which was used from the British Army from 1939 right through the Second World War and is likewise still in use by um, armies all around the world. Okay, number fours or Mark threes. Open fire. Got to open up there. I knew there'd be one of them. I knew there'd be one somewhere. Okay, all done. Okay, right, so if we and the Yanks had bolt action rifles, the Germans also had bolt action rifles. Just as good, not quite as fast to use, but a very sturdy, very accurate rifle indeed. So we've got a couple of German Mausers here. There you see he's got one. The Germans over there are giving the same amount of trouble as they've always given us, so we'll uh, just go without him. Okay, fire your rounds. Okay, good enough. Right, so most troops were issued with right, bolt action rifles of one description or another. There were hundreds of different types of guns used in the war, as you might imagine. This is just a small selection. So, when it comes to officers, NCOs, chief cooks and bottle washers, they needed something more portable, so they were given submachine guns, generally speaking. Uh, there was all sorts of different submachine guns. We haven't got them all here, but they all work pretty much the same way. It's what they call a blowback action. Okay, they all fire around about 600 rounds per minute. Okay, so we've got one here for you to see what that goes like. Okay, Lee, give it thrice. And whoever's got one over here. Crack on. All done. 
Yeah, lower them when you're done. All right, cool. Right, so, these are only light weapons. Obviously, you need something with a bit more oomph to keep the heads down and uh, generally stop the aggression from the opposite side. So, we need, like, some sort of artillery. Well, with infantry regiments, they, they would use mortars, okay? So, first of all, we'll have a look at the two-inch mortar, wherever it is. It's over in that corner there. Okay, the two-inch mortar was quite popular with airborne troops because it was light, easy to carry around. There was no particular sights on it, it was all done by guesswork. Okay, watch where the bombs land and walk them in. Okay, so, lady, away you go, two-inch water. Okay, so that's it, there's your two-inch water. I'll say a light portable, could be issued to any fighting section. Most useful to keep the, uh, the heads down. Right, so over here, now we've got two 60 millimeter wards, which are a bit heavier. The, uh, the, th the two inch there you was good for about 500 to 800 meters. This one, the 60 mil, is a bit good for up to a mile even, okay? Depending on the elevation that you've got it at. So it fires a bit more potent bomb. Okay, 60 mils, away you go. This fire, crack on. Took it down. Quick, the Germans are coming. Oh, that was a squib, wasn't it? We got any more? No, okay. Right, okay. From there then, you've got medium machine guns. Okay, these were used uh, extensively from 1907 to 1912, I beg your pardon. Right away through the First, Second World War, various wars. Uh, the way through. In fact, this was when I joined the army in 1966. This was still in service, not for very long, but it was still there. It's a good gun, fires about 600 rounds a minute, and it hopefully sounds like this, like that. Silence. Go on. All right, good on. Right, where's my men on the jeep? Right, okay, Lee, jump in there. Right. So, you'll have all heard about the SAS, I imagine. Okay, everybody knows about them. This is a rig up of one of their raiding vehicles. Okay. Now, the SAS fought behind enemy lines. They did actually wreck more German aeroplanes on the ground than the RAF did in the air. Okay. And what they used to do was drive through um, an airfield and shoot these machine guns and all the aircraft and just blow them up to, and blow them up to pieces, plus putting mines on them and all that sort of stuff. But uh, this one's armed with a 30 caliber Browning and twin Vickers K's. Now the Vickers K's were generally stolen from the RAF because they were meant for aircraft. But the SAS found they were quite useful with a high rate of fire, very reliable, and 100 round pan magazines on the top, so a good ammo supply. Okay, that, see if it'll go. See if it'll go that one. Yep. Okay, there you go. That's a Browning 1919 machine gun. As its name suggests, it was just at the end of the First World War, too late to begin the war. An extremely good gun, still used today by lots of different uh, countries. Okay, now then, there's the Vickers kids. Don't forget, these are gas operated guns and they're a little bit temperamental, like the female. But hey, I'm not going to say that. Right, okay, these are the Vickers kids. Hopefully, they'll work as well. There you go. Awesome firepower. Right, okay. So, with all those going together and many, many more, can you imagine the type of noise that was going on around in a battlefield? We'll try and replicate that for a couple of seconds for you. Okay? Because these blanks cost money. Right, okay, is everybody loaded and ready? When you've done that, Lee, you'll have to work. Four guns, all that training I've given you. Right, is everybody ready up there? Okay, you get smoke, you get loud bangs. 
Okay, everybody, fire. Fire. Right. You don't see no. And there you have it, okay? Couple of seconds worth. Hope you all enjoy that. Hope you all have a nice day. And isn't it nice to get out of the house? Thank you all.